So what is money? Money is a technological advancement of commerce. 4,000 years ago, you owned a beautiful plot of land with great, beautiful olive trees. And I owned 50, maybe 70 cows. And I saw that plot of land. I said, you know what? I, I want that plot of land. You already have cows, actually, so you don't need the cows that I have. So we can't actually transact. So I have to go sell my cows for some pigeons because you want the pigeons. Now I come back, I bring you the pigeons. One of them dies, so I have to go back and get another pigeon. And then finally, I get the plot of land. Now you have the pigeons and you have to go figure out somebody that wants pigeons in exchange for you to get the next service or the next good. So the problem was with the bartering system, there was no ability to scale, no ability to build monopolies because there was no ability to sustain wealth and there's no what? Medium of exchange that we both agreed upon. We introduced the next form of bartering, the next form of commerce, coinage. Coinage is a technological revolution. It was the first time that we all agreed upon what was something and what was the store of value. So successful merchants, kings, they began to hoard it. And they began to build treasuries and now they began to conquer more lands because they no longer were limited by the limitations of bartering you could take the coins they wouldn't rot you would sell the gold in china you would sell the gold in india you would sell the gold in paris and it would still be counted as gold so now you had the ability for scale the issue was now king started realizing hey maybe i can shave a little bit off the top of the coin and make some new coins and you know what maybe the people won't notice that i'm printing coins out of thin air maybe i'll add some alloy or some metal instead of the silver diluting the currency so they began to realize hey like coinage now can be forged so we need another system now people can no longer have their own system we need to have something centralized everybody's managing on gold the banks are holding gold let's get rid of the gold standard Let's introduce paper money. Paper money, obviously, if you have, let's say, a kilo worth of gold, you can't be carrying that with your horse hanging around town. No, you have paper receipts that the bank gives you. And people began exchanging paper receipts. The receipts of what? The units of gold that were in the bank. But then the, the banks got cheeky. And they said, you know what? Nobody's checking our bank reserves. So what if we issue more paper than we actually have gold reserves? And the French noticed. They're like, hey, these motherfucking Americans, they're printing more paper, handing it out to people than the gold that they have in the reserves. So they came in, they wiped out all the reserves, collapsing the economy. So what did they have to do? They had to introduce the gold standard, getting rid of the gold standard. Why? Well, now we just can print as much money as we want and it's not pegged by gold. And now we were introduced with paper. And then credit cards rolled around. Yeah, I still had to go into the bank and deal with paper, but I could transact and buy things with a piece of plastic. Okay, so now digital money was introduced. But now we have the battle of what is the digital money that we want to adopt. And in these new crossroads of technological advancement, you have something that's born known as Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the permissionless open ledger. Everybody knows how much of it exists, who owns what based off of, you know, obviously you don't know who owns what wallet, but you know what wallet owns how much. Everything is open, everything is transparent, and everything is what? Peer to peer. It's the purest form of going back 2000 years and transacting gold bar for gold bar in a digital format. It is the evolution of money. It is the natural evolution of money. Now you have the old system, the banking system, the banking cartel that takes a fee off of us transacting. So what is the rule or what is the need of a bank today? What is the purpose of a bank? Well, you know, Luke, the purpose of the bank is to store your deposits. No, a bank does not hold deposits. If they hold deposits, why do they give you interest on your deposit? It's not a deposit. The moment they give you an interest on it, it's a loan. You're loaning them money, they're giving you an interest, they're taking that money, they're investing it. It's not a deposit, it's a loan. Once they give you interest, that thing becomes a liability on their balance. What you're seeing displayed on your checking account is just a record of how much the bank owes you. <laughs> so the purpose of the bank isn't to hold deposits. Well, the purpose of the bank, Luke, is to fractionalize money. Well, no, that's not the purpose of the bank. It doesn't fractionalize money. Well, what's the purpose of the bank? The purpose of the bank is credit creation. It creates loans. It's in the business of buying and selling securities. So the bank is in the business of credit creation and everything around us is getting inflated and more expensive due to the fact that we're creating credit that is being utilized to buy Louis Vuitton bags. It's not productive credit. It's not credit that adds the GDP. We enter a situation whereby the dilution of our money becomes so big that we no longer trust it. 
But now we enter a very dangerous situation. If we don't have an alternative payment system, the tokenization or the programmability of digital money, like a central bank digital currency, becomes very scary. Because now they don't want to just issue the currency, they want to control the rules as to how you can use the currency. So for example, hey, Riz, you've already spent, you know what? You spent two hours already with the light on. Now you're like, it's turned off because your curfew's up. And if not, we'll turn off your power bill and your cards won't work. Oh, you didn't get vaccinated? Oh, you went five kilometers past your house curfew? No worries, your cards just won't work. You have no freedom. Back in the day, at least you had cash, you could do whatever you wanted. So is that the system that you want? The answer is no. What is the alternative system to that digital revolution, that next advancement of money? In my opinion, it's Bitcoin, digital currencies, things that are decentralized. So it's a little bit of how I've been thinking about and theorizing this idea of, of Bitcoin and rationalizing whether digital currencies, decentralized ones, fighting against centralized institutions are going to last. And I think people fight for it.